Unseen Sound Wars, Warsaw Rising 44, from Culture.pl and the Warsaw Rising Museum. In front of you stands one of the most majestic buildings of pre-war Warsaw. Originally built in the first years of the 20th century, it was the capital's first skyscraper. In the 1920s, it was taken over by the Past Telephone Company headquarters and remains known to this day as the Pasta Building. Look at the front of the building and move your eyes upwards. You should see a Polish flag and the symbol of the Kotwica, or Anchor, the emblem of the Polish underground state. From the outset of the uprising, the insurgents ensued in a bloody battle to take over the building. The past building was one of the most important buildings in Warsaw for the German Nazi occupiers. The telephone exchange housed inside was a communications nerve center for the Nazi war effort on the Eastern Front, which by late 1944 was moving ever closer to Poland's capital. From the very beginning of the uprising, insurgents targeted the building, but it seemed like an uphill struggle from the get-go. A number of attempts to storm the building ended in failure. With the number of insurgent casualties fast on the rise, a plan had to be devised, and quickly. On the 13th of August, the ammunition and food supplies coming to the building from the nearby Saxon gardens were cut off by insurgent forces. Two days later, its water and electricity were also successfully brought to a halt, and finally, the telephone lines were taken down. All that remained was one final raid to put the building in the hands of the Polish combatants. On the night of the 19th of August, the Home Army's Kilinski Battalion led several other formations in a storm on the building. They had already blown up the outer walls of the pasta earlier and drenched the interior with petrol, setting it ablaze with a Piat mortar round. The Germans didn't stand a chance, and the next day, on the 20th of August, the fight entered its final stage. Sappers ripped another hole in the building's walls, allowing better access for the Polish fighters. And by the late afternoon, fighting was reduced to one-on-one -on -one combat. A number of German soldiers who had managed to hold out in the basement of the past building were eventually trapped and taken outside with their hands up in surrender. The Polish flag was hoisted up and once more flew from the building. The storming of the past telephone exchange was one of the most spectacular events during the 63 days of the Warsaw Uprising. Almost 40 Germans were killed, while 120 were taken prisoner. On the Polish side, only around a dozen or so combatants died. Among the seized loot was a large ammunition stash, which further proved a strong morale booster following the successful siege. The strategic building and its surroundings remained in Polish hands until the end of the uprising.